Good morning everyone. In our previous topic we have discussed on electric potential. Now in this topic we will discuss on an electric dipole and flux lines. How an electric dipole is formed and what are the flux lines and how they radiate. Those things we will discuss. An electric dipole is formed when two point charges of equal magnitude but opposite sign are separated by a small distance means let us let us take a two point charges charge q1 and charge q2 if these two charges of equal magnitude but opposite in sign that means plus q and minus q are separated by a small distance then that formation is treated as electric dipole now let us consider a dipole the potential at point p of r comma theta comma phi is given by so how we are now going to find out the amount of potential that is produced from a dipole see let us see what is how is the structure of a electric dipole see from this diagram we notice that we have two point charges positive charge q and negative charge minus q these two charges are separated by a small distance d and we have considered a coordinate system x y z and these two point charges are placed along z direction so uh, with these two point charges now we are going to find potential at point p potential at point p as shown in the figure so from positive charge the radius is r1 and from the negative charge it is r2 that means the position vector sir and with reference to origin it is r now the what is the lateral distance can be taken as d cos theta d cos theta now we have to find the potential at that point p of r comma theta comma phi and it is given as as per the potential concept in the previous topic we have discussed potential v is equal to q divided by 4 pi epsilon naught 1 over r1 minus 1 over r2 now with reference to this we can write it as q divided by 4 pi epsilon naught r2 minus r1 divided by r1 r2 okay now if this distance r is far far greater than d where d is the distance between positive charge and negative charge naturally it is very small and the radial distance that means the point at which you are going to find the potential is very far therefore if r is far far greater than d then r2 minus r1 is approximately equal to d cos theta similarly r2 r1 the product of r2 and r1 is approximately equal to r square so the potential equation now can be rewritten as this is our potential equation v is equal to q divided by 4 pi epsilon naught r2 minus r1 divided by r1 r2 now you find what is r2 minus r1 and r1 r2 now if you go for that equation to be expanded when then we can write v is equal to q divided by 4 pi epsilon naught d cos theta divided by r square since d cos theta is equal to d dot a r so distance in radial direction a r direction so d is equal to d a z where d is equal to d a z that means the distance between these two point charges are placed in z axis along z axis therefore unit vector in the direction of z axis so d a z now if we define p is equal to q d as a dipole moment now we are going to introduce a new parameter called p and that p is the product of charge and distance between the charges and that is dipole moment then we can write v is equal to q divided by 4 pi epsilon naught d cos theta by r square as v is equal to that p value p dot a r divided by 4 pi epsilon naught r square okay now we, we replace that q d as p p dot a r divided by 4 pi epsilon naught into r square now the dipole moment p is directed from minus q to plus q that means negative charge to positive charge if the dipole center is not at the origin 
but at some distance or at some point r dash then we can write potential v of r is equal to p dot see in the previous case we have taken origin as the reference now that origin is not taken as reference and r dash is a point where we are going to take the potential so p dot r minus r dash divided by 4 pi epsilon naught magnitude r minus r dash whole cube now the electric field due to the potential that means due to the dipole with the center at origin can be taken from so we are going to find out the electric field due to the dipole with the center at the origin and that can be taken from our previous concepts e is equal to minus del v where v is we just now calculated v is equal to q divided by 4 pi epsilon naught d cos theta divided by r square then then e is equal to minus del v we calculated relation e is equal to minus del v now where v is this value q divided by 4 pi epsilon naught d cos theta by r square now substitute this one here here we know the relationship between electric field and electric potential and it is given as e is equal to minus del v it is e is equal to minus del v where del means gradient where del means gradient here we are going for cylindrical coordinate system therefore we can write it as e is equal to minus of dou v by dou r into a r unit vector a r plus 1 over r dou v by dou theta into a theta since gradient operator in Cartesian system is dou by dou x into a x plus dou by dou y into a y plus dou by dou z into a z whereas in cylindrical system gradient del is equal to dou by dou r into a r plus 1 by r into dou by dou theta into a theta plus 1 by r sin theta dou by dou phi into a phi here as we have chosen uh, cylindrical system and in that too we don't have phi term here therefore we can write e is equal to minus del v that is equal to minus of dou v by dou r into a r plus 1 by r into dou v by dou theta into a theta where v electric potential v is given as q d cos theta whole divided by 4 pi epsilon naught into r square therefore e electric field e is equal to minus del v that is equal to minus of dou by dou r into q d cos theta by 4 pi epsilon naught r square into a r plus 1 by r dou by dou theta into q d cos theta divided by 4 pi epsilon naught into r square what we did here we just substituted the value of v then we are supposed to do partial differentiation as we continue for partial differentiation we will get minus of q d cos theta by 4 pi epsilon naught dou by dou r into 1 by r square into a r plus 1 by r cube into q d divided by 4 pi epsilon naught into dou by dou theta cos theta a theta that means we have taken a r terms and a theta terms now minus of q d cos theta divided by 4 pi epsilon naught into if you do the partial differentiation of dou by dou r into 1 by r square into a r we will be getting minus 2 divided by r cube into a r plus q d by 4 pi epsilon naught r cube into minus sin theta a theta therefore q d cos theta divided by 2 pi epsilon naught r cube into a r plus q d sin theta divided by 4 pi epsilon naught r cube into a theta here we take q d by 4 pi epsilon naught r cube common then we can write it as 2 cos theta a r plus sin theta a theta here we know that dipole moment p is equal to q d as we have already discussed p is equal to q d is dipole moment therefore electric field e is equal to p divided by 4 pi epsilon naught r cube into 2 cos theta a r plus sin theta a theta is our final equation in determining electric field now what is the observation let us take a point charge is a monopole and its electric field varies inversely as square 
of distance r square while its potential field varies inversely as cube of distance that is r cube. So the electric field due to dipole varies inversely as r cube while its potential varies inversely as r square. Now this is about potential that we have calculated here for a dipole. Now let us consider the flux lines concept. The idea of electric flux lines are electric lines of force as they are sometimes called a, was introduced by Michael Faraday as I shown in the figure here. Michael Faraday in his experimental investigation as a way of visualizing the electric field. In order to visualize the electric field, this scientist has identified electric flux lines. An electric flux line is an imaginary path or line drawn in such a way that its direction at any point is the direction of electric field at that point. So in simply it words, in simple words it says what the direction of electric field at a particular point. Those lines are said to be called as electric flux lines. In another words, they are the lines to which electric field density capital D is tangential at every point. So any surface on which the potential is the same throughout is known as equipotential surface. Now we are going to discuss about equipotential surface. A surface on which the potential is same throughout is known as an equipotential surface. Now the intersection of an equipotential surface and a plane results in a path or line and it is known as equipotential line. So we can even define what is an equipotential line. Uh, keep in mind that no work is done in moving a charge from one point to another point along an equipotential surface or equipotential line. Therefore, in, in displacing a charge from Va to Vb, that means from point A to point B with the absolute potentials Va and Vb, that is Va minus Vb is equal to zero. Therefore, the total amount of electric field produced in that line is equal to zero. Therefore, integral E dot dl is equal to zero. From this, we, we, we will take some conclusions that the line of force are simply flux lines are always normal to equipotential surfaces. The examples of equipotential surfaces for point charges and a dipole are shown in the following figures and this is the figures. So this is equipotential surface for a point charge and electric dipole. So the dotted line indicates the equipotential surface representation whereas the dark lines arrows indicate the flux lines. In figure A, this is for point charge. See all the surface lines are concentric circles which are moving. Whereas the, whereas the flux lines are just like vectors that are moving away from the positive charge. When coming to electric dipole, we can see the dark, uh, dotted lines and dark lines. These dotted lines are treated as equipotential surfaces and dark lines are treated as flux lines at two conditions for V greater than zero and V less than zero. Note from these examples that the direction of E is everywhere normal to the equipotential lines. This is what we can notice here. Applications of electric flux lines. A typical example or application of a field mapping that means flux lines and equipotential surfaces is found in diagnosis of human heart. We can see the application here. The human heart beats in response to an electric field potential difference across it. The heart can be characterized as a dipole with the field map similar to that of the figure as shown here. Such a field map is useful in detecting abnormal heart position. Thank you. All the very best for such engineering classes on electromagnetic waves and transmission lines, antennas, cellular mobile communications, satellite communications and all communication engineering subjects and for personality development, inspiring talks, motivational talks uh, and for good handwriting skills, uh, kindly subscribe our channel Kasigari Prasad.
थैंक यू जय हिंद जय भारत